Hi, this is Pam Flower Patch Farmhouse, and welcome to the garden preparation for spring because I'm going to plant some more bulbs today. We've had ice and snow, a little bit of rain, and just a whole lot of things have been happening in the last month, and I'm very much behind. But I have gotten started. I already have about 200 of my bulbs planted, tulips. I have um, one that's called Gemini Collection, really pretty, out in front in galvanized containers with hardware cloth underneath, They're actually fire rings. So there's just a ring of metal with an open bottom. And we put hardware cloth down, and uh, that's to prevent the voles and gophers from eating the bulbs, which they will. And I could already, already have evidence that they've tried to get in underneath of that. So it's a good thing we're doing it that way. And then I planted some here on the back deck called uh, Indigo Mood, and I'll put pictures up of both of those collections. I got those from Color Blends, and I can't wait to see how they turn out this spring. I have a few more of the Gemini. I'm going to plant in a tub over here, a big um, wine barrel tub. And then I'm going to put out some of these in the back garden. This one is from Longfield Gardens. It's these two beautiful, a dark pink and a light pink. And one is called Vogue and the other's Finola. And I think they will be really pretty in a tub in my back. And then alliums. Um, I had the voles eat all my al alliums that were in the garden. I had some here on the back deck in tubs. And in May, they were just beautiful here on the deck. So I'm going to do some more in tubs or another container that has some protection from the voles. So if anybody tells you gophers and voles won't eat alliums, I'm telling you they will. Um, because I had them do it. Alrighty, I'm going to show you um, what the raccoons did with the tulips that I've already planted. So right down here are the tubs I planted. These are these um, rectangular ones. I had dahlias in them this summer. In fact, I did a whole YouTube video on dahlias and tubs in containers and how they did. And these were a couple of them that they were in. And I'm reusing them for tulips. I'm going to have these on my back deck so I can have lots of tulips to look at uh, from my dining room window. Uh, and look, these were all nicely planted. I'm assuming this came from down in there. They were much deeper, but I guess I'll just shove them back in and recover them. And then I'm going to put some, they were deeper than that, but I'm not going to dig up everything. Um, cayenne pepper flakes on top. That's supposed to help prevent that. And I will let you know if that works because they will definitely come back and try to dig up more. So I'll try that trick. And I didn't put any um, fertilizer in here or bone meal or fertilizer with bone meal that you usually use for bulbs or could use. Um, so if I'm sure they would have had an even worse disaster with them being dug up if I had used a bone meal because most critters are attracted to that. So anyways, that's my fix for that. And again, I said I would let you know how that works. And there is Rachel, the hunter kitty. She thinks she's something else. And here's my back deck here this time of year, just really quick. I had just done a video for you when it was in full bloom and now it is getting put to, to bed for winter. I am incorporating some evergreens in pots, like these little Alberta, dwarf Alberta spruce. And um, I am getting some more boxwoods that I'm making topiaries with that, to put out here to have some nice winter interest. And I have my rosemary topiaries too. Let me come over here and show that to you. Right next to Miss Rachel, so these. So I'm going to do a video soon on how I do my rosemary topiaries. So I have this big thing of crushed red pepper flakes, and I'm just going to sprinkle it liberally on top of this the soil of these containers and see how it does. That repelling raccoons is most likely what it was. I don't I think the skunks or the squirrels were up. I've never seen squirrels up here, but I do have constant foot tracks of um, raccoons. So there's that. So we'll all let you know, like I said, how that works. So this is one of the fire rings that 
I put hardware cloth underneath. Let me see if I can show you that. I haven't buried the edges yet. We put it far enough out. Oh yeah, you can see it. See right down here is the hardware cloth and that does prevent the voles from coming up. And if you can see right there is some um, ridges in the soil. It was much more discernible uh, earlier in the week, but the rain kind of tamped them down a little bit, but that's the voles going through there. I'm hoping they're not eating my um, irises. They do nibble on the bottoms of my irises, but they haven't been too terrible. In fact, I think I will put out some red pepper flakes here. Just thinking maybe they wouldn't like them either. This will prevent the raccoons from getting into this area and digging up bulbs. They haven't gotten in here yet. Not that they won't. And maybe, maybe it'll go down into the soil and prevent the voles from getting around here. Who knows? Pretty hot stuff. I need to probably buy a 50 pound bag of this. We've got voles so bad. Okay, so that's, I have two of these. Let me see if I can step back. So here's the one fire ring we were just by where I was shaking the cayenne pepper in it and my sidewalk and then over here is the second one. I wanted them kind of to be symmetrical and to, you know, easy on the eye beside the sidewalk on each side and I'll probably do a real um, low growing ground cover on the ground there. And I'll have So right here is the barrel, half whiskey barrel. I'm going to plant these bulbs in. These are the same indigo mood, I think it's called, and that I have in those containers, the rectangular containers over there. I had thrown some alyssum cuttings on here. So again, it would seed and it very, very well may. Let me clean this out so I can dig down a little bit. In here, there's some soil in here. Looks like there's some seedlings or something. It could have been the alyssum growing, but I'm just going to dig an area, and I'm going to put down a whole bunch of them and cover them up. And then I'm going to top it up with some fresh compost. I have plenty that I get from a local organic turkey farm and just get them down in there so they'll be nice and deep when I'm done and get them down. Now I have tomato cages that I can put up on here to cover. The trouble we have is we have such late heavy wet snows that many times it crushes my tulips and daffodils and uh, having just a little bit of something to baffle the snow or deter it a little bit from breaking them down when um, they've already started to come up so that will help and I try to go a little bit deeper that way it's said that they will have stronger stems. If that's true or not, I do not know, but it doesn't hurt to do that. There we have that planted, and I'll bring a bucket of fresh compost, top it up, and plant it with violas. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting a few, a little bit of rice holes in there, and I'll mix it in with the soil I'm putting on top because it aids in drainage and moisture retention. And this is just plain compost 
that I got from the chicken or turkey ranch. So it's not absolutely necessary, but um, it was recommended to me by a fellow gardener and I have so far been very impressed. I started using it last um, spring and it replaces um, peat moss and cocoa core and it's just very sustainable. And it does both, which is amazing. It does, it helps retain moisture as well as increase drainage. So if you ever had like potting soil get hard as a rock and clump up, this is what helps to prevent that. Oh, I have a piece of Irish rhizome in there. So topping this up and I'll add a bit more of the rice holes. Now the only thing I have found with the rice holes is um, they sprout. Some of them sprout, and, but it's real easy to pull them out and they're easily recognizable. And they just look, look like a little grass. So actually it's a little bit of rice growing. So here, I'll put this in here. Sometimes I pre-mix it, but uh, I didn't today because my bucket was full and I didn't. But I just mix it. I just don't have this very deep on here, so it was easy enough to mix in place. Another bulb I'm getting planted today are these Iris reticulata. These are absolutely gorgeous and for me they came up in February when nothing else was blooming and they just were the most gorgeous blue. I have them back in this container back here and for two years I've had them in that and they've done great. They've come back every year and even um, multiplied. So that one probably needs to be, and I may dig it up and see, divided because they, they get so much in and there's snow in here still. Um, so, but I'm going to plant this matching container that goes along with that one with these ones. I got these at Home Depot. There's 20 in this pack for $5 and I'm going to put all of them in here. So now let's just top it up with a bit of compost. Make sure they're plenty deep. And I could go, go oh, there's some of the rice holes in there. Perfect. And spread it out. And I think I'll go ahead and add some more to this one back here. It's been a while since it's been freshened up. Perfect. And there is. And there we have planted some Iris reticulata and we will enjoy these in February.